Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Hi. Been gone for a minute, now I'm back with a jump off. You can probably still hear it in my voice. I have been very ill these last couple of weeks. I am fortunate enough for this to just be a really horrible summer cold and I am finally feeling well enough to film. So while I take these down, I do have a couple of hot topics to discuss with you. These are very likely unpopular opinions and you know, maybe I'll get canceled for it, but it needs to be said. But before we get into today's video, please make sure that you are subscribed and be sure to hit that bell so you are notified every single time I upload a video. And if you enjoy the video, I'd greatly appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up because it really does help my channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I have had these in for a little over six weeks. I plan to have these in for four weeks. Um, and then life happened. Of course, I have my handy dandy target bag for all the hair. So I want to kind of discuss some things that I have been seeing these last few months. Now, the last few months, of course, everyone's been home and, you know, just trying to figure out how to make the most of their time. And a lot of times, to this day, because of course we're still in a pandemic, all oh, y'all are not gonna like this. So I have been noticing uh, an increase in these clubhouse rooms where influencers and black brands have been uh, communicating in an effort to kind of mend the, the relationships. Um, there's a lot of, I don't want to say tension, but discord, I guess, amongst black influencers and black brands. And initially, the clubhouses kind of started off with the two kind of coming together to communicate how to be better for each other, how to have mutually beneficial relationships between the brands and the influencers. I was very interested in seeing what uh, larger influencers or more successful influencers were saying as well as what some of the higher ups in these brands have had to say, be it a brand owner, a VP, or a social media manager, whatever. I was just very interested in seeing what the, the disconnect was there. And maybe my bias kind of made me not very receptive in a sense to what the brands or brand representatives were saying, but I really wanted to listen with intention in an effort to not be so indifferent and jaded. <laughs> in my opinion, it's still seeming like brands want a lot for a little bit or nothing. And that's unfortunate because if we're being honest, a lot of these brands, specifically the black owned brands are what they are because of influencers. Every single day, people will downplay, undermine, disrespect, belittle the effect that influencers have on these brands. And if we can just tell the truth and shame the devil, a lot of these brands would not be in Target, Walmart, Ulta, Sephora, or whatever the hell if an influencer or influencers hadn't put them on. So anyway, these conversations are happening between influencers and these brands, and a lot of people are listening in, hoping to seek some insight on what to charge, on how to charge, on how to communicate with the brands back and forth, on usage, on X, Y, Z. Like, the bottom line being, a lot of people just don't know what they don't know, and, you know, there are influencers who are finding success and are, you know, trying to help in a sense, but I'm gonna get flat for this. They're charging people for help. And I'm not saying that information or that their input or advice is something that doesn't deserve to be monetized. The whole content creation, ebook coaching phenom that is kind of sweeping the influencer space is giving predatory. And I'll tell you why. In my opinion, it's seemingly the exact same thing that these brands are doing. Often these brands will prey on smaller influencers because these influencers will be happy and satisfied with a gift card or with product or with a share or a repost. Not to say that a repost, a share or free product isn't valuable, but if somebody is providing content, that is work. 
and they deserve to be paid. Period. So like I was saying, I would like to believe that it's not anyone's intent to come off as predatory as some of these brands are. And of course, I'm not telling anyone that they shouldn't monetize something that they're good at. It's just that all of the things aren't on Google. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> at this point, the the clubhouse conversations and the ebooks and the coaching is just telling people to charge what they want to charge. And you know what? Maybe that's the way to go. I don't, I don't know. So while we're on that topic, I also want to talk about how influencers can get shamed for sponsored content. Now listen, I have stressed to you all a lot how much time and work and money goes into creating quality, consistent content. As a creator, but also as a viewer of YouTube content, I get it. A lot of people are dishonest and will have you spending your money on some shit that is a bold-faced lie. I get it. It's still work and they deserve to be paid. I think the issue here is not so much the influencer. Yes, they are dishonest and they're doing it for a check. Howsomever. I think it's important as viewers to be accountable for the things that we consume, yes? And the things that we buy into and the things that we invest in. And if we're investing in something or someone that doesn't live up to the hype or isn't worth our time or our money, that's on us. It's just irresponsible and unreasonable to put the responsibility of your wallet and things that you watch on an influencer. We all have choices and we have to be accountable for the choices that we make. We have to take the good with the bad. We have to deal with the consequences of our actions. If I pick an Olay body wash based off of Jackie Ina Say So and it doesn't work for me, that means I invested in something that she uses and advertised and it didn't work for me. How unfortunate. I won't buy it again. I'll return it. It's the accountability for me. And we can't shame black influencers because I see that this happens more to black influencers than it does to white ones. For getting a coin, we deserve to be paid. You deserve to be paid for the work that you do as well. And I hope that you are being paid. It's so interesting for me because it seems like we, as a whole, as a, as a community, as black people, will blindly support black owned brands, black capitalism, in a sense, black consumerism. But when it comes to supporting black influencers, there's some type of disconnect. By and large, we don't want to see black influencers being paid. I'm truly interested in the reasoning and the logic for that. Specifically in the natural hair space, I'm noticing a lot of influencers are going into more lifestyle beauty content because natural hair brands aren't paying, honey. And as I constantly reiterate, creating hair content or any content is work. And of course the brands that are paying, you're seeing them in these influencers videos all the time. And shout out to those particular brands that are paying and shout out to the influencers that are getting the coins. But because of this apparent coin shortage in the natural hair space, people are branching out into other beauty and lifestyle content. People are vlogging more, people are doing get ready with me's more, people are doing makeup tutorials. Because as I stated previously, natural hair is a dying niche. People go natural every day, someone new is on YouTube every single day. But I say it's a dying niche because the amount of work that goes into natural hair videos and the amount of revenue, they don't curl all the way over. And as natural hair influencers continue to grow and learn their reach, learn their worth, and see how much time it takes, they gradually and continually leave the natural hair space. And to be frank, branching out and doing other type of content where you build your brand or your audience based on one particular type of content, it's a huge risk. There are some influencers who can put up any type of video and get clicks. But if you build your following based on one type of content, and then you put up something that your viewers just don't know or care about, you may or may not get clicks. So the idea here is to build on to your current audience by adding and captivating a new audience. And with that comes the growing pains of your current audience not liking or even not watching the new video, as well as the growing pains of very slowly building your new audience that is gonna be interested in this type of content. And a lot of times these influencers are forced to adapt in order to survive because 
this is a lot of people's bread and butter. I guess what I'm trying to generally get at is that I just want everyone to be successful without anyone having to feel shortchanged, low bold, gaslit, manipulated, cheated, or anything like that. It's just a lot of hoodwinking and bamboozling going on, and I'm not with that. Like, why isn't there enough out here for everybody? Why can't everybody help everybody? So yeah, let me finish taking the rest of this down so we can go ahead and do this. Okay, so I'm on the last braid. Thank God. I wanted to kind of show you all how I've been tackling some of the mats because with the braiding hair being kind of woven into my hair using edge control and me having the braids in for so long, of course I have buildup and I can't really just pull my hair out. So what I've been doing is taking my boo, my Apogee Keratin Restructurizer, and kind of saturating the section. So that way it makes it easier for me to kind of get the matted buildup out of that section of hair. And it just helps me. <sighs> It just helps me a lot. I am all done taking down my braids. Feel like I definitely might have cut some sections, you know, but that's okay because I've been wanting to cut my hair anyway. So once I get my hair trimmed in the next, hopefully, couple of days, uh, that won't be an issue because I've been wanting my hair cut into a shape anyway. So now that that's done, I'm actually going to go in with another one of my faves. This is the Negus Banda Cheve pre poo treatment. You all have seen me apply this a million times, so I'm not gonna waste your time. And you already know that I love it. Be sure to use code TRESSES at checkout if you go ahead and buy it, which I 100% recommend that you do. Okay, so I'm all done applying my pre poo So pre poo today, like I said, I went in with the Cheve pre poo treatment from Negus Banda. I was actually running low on this Cheve pre poo treatment, so I went in and combined it with a little bit of this Keratin 2-Minute Reconstructor, which I had talked about on my channel. And I actually had a little bit of the 2-Step Apergy Protein Treatment also left, so I threw a little bit of that in there as well so that way we can finish it up as far as how much hair i lost during the pre poo stage this is it i'm really disgusted by that but some people might want to see that i don't know why but they might because i'm not using anything that i concocted with this negus band of pre poo treatment like i'm supposed to i don't want to leave it in too long and risk damaging my hair so i'm going to leave it in for about 30 minutes and once i rinse that i'll go ahead and continue with my wash day which will not be included in this video so in order to see what products i use in my next wash day situation of course you're going to have to stay tuned in the meantime this wraps up today's tea with tresses during the tick down video or whatever i wind up calling this so make sure you drop down in the comments and let me know your thoughts and on your way to watch another video of mine please make sure that you like share and subscribe Thank you so, 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 so much for watching. Please, please be safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.